uh, I'll be uh, presenting a patient RSM, a 52-year-old uh, uh, female from uh, Puerto Princesa. So she's complaining of uh, floaters and flashes of light on her left eye. And um, important to note uh, is uh, there was no uh, history of trauma or pain associated with her symptoms, but uh, there was occasional uh, dizziness. So a uh, patient um, underwent a uh, cranial MRI with contrast. So um, these are the HL T1, T2, GRE, and uh, flare sequences showing an intraocular uh, lesion in the inferomedial quadrant of the left globe, which appears to arise from the choroid or uh, retina with no evidence of uh, extraocular extension. This uh, hyperintense relative to the choroid on T1 and hypointense on T2. So susceptibility artifacts are as well seen, the GRE. And on the contralateral side of the lesion, you can see uh, a wedge-shaped uh, focus that is isointense to the lesion on T1 and uh, with the same signals relative to the adjacent muscle on T2. So there was no uh, restricted uh, diffusion noted, and on contrast, it shows uh, moderate enhancement. So uh, with these uh, findings, uh, the study was signed out as um, a moderately enhancing uh, left intraocular mass relating to ocular melanoma with suggestive uh, retinal detachment. So a uh, patient then um, came back, a uh, patient had a series of follow-ups with the Eye Institute wherein um, additional imaging was done yielding uh, these results. So for the ocular ultrasound, um, it showed a choroidal uh, melanoma, the left, with retinal, deta retinal uh, detachment. For, for the optical coherence uh, tomography, which uh, is used to obtain a um, high-resolution cross-sectional images of the retina to visualize the different layers of the retina, what was seen, uh, there was a generalized uh, macular thickening with neurosensory uh, retinal detachment on the left as well as uh, posterior vitreous uh, detachment. For uh, fluorescein uh, angiography, used to visualize the blood flow in the retina. Um, it was, um, the blood flow was um, normal, and but a, uh, the subretinal mass with retinal detachment is again, again seen. So for, um, on cutaneous, uh, mel for ocular melanoma, it's the most ocular, uh, the most common primary eye tumor in uh, adults, and the second most common type of melanoma after the cutaneous type. And uh, ocular melanoma also tends to be uh, more aggressive than its uh, cutaneous counterpart. So majority of uh, ocular melanomas orig originate in the uvea while the remainder arise in the non-UVL sites, uh, including the conjunctiva. So in the UVL tract, uh, choroidal melanoma is the most common subtype, but offers the uh, poor prognosis compared to um, the iris or ciliary body um, melanoma. So for um, the risk of developing uh, ocular melanoma is higher in uh, white Caucasian patients, uh, people with uh, light eye and um, skin color, and people who have difficulty uh, in obtaining a tan. So, in Asians, uh, its in the, in, its uh, incidence is much lower, estimated about uh, 0.2 to 0.6 cases per million compared to that of the um, Caucasians wherein about uh, five to six cases are seen per million. So uh, common clinical presentation of uh, UVL melanoma depends on the size and location of the tumor. 
and uh, some are some are asymptomatic they're only uh, incidentally uh, detected on ophthalmic examination while most patients would experience uh, blurring of vision visual field uh, defects uh, floaters uh, pain and other symptoms uh, related to increased in intraocular pressure so in evaluating um, ocular melanoma so it's generally first uh, detected on ophthalmic examination. So usual ultrasound is usually the first imaging modality used to further evaluate the um, mass. And this also helpful in differentiating it from other pathologies. So then a cross-sectional imaging modality such as uh, CT and MRI are more uh, useful in um, uh, for the exact uh, delineation of the uh, tumor and evaluation of the optic nerve involvement, and as well as the extraocular extension. At CT, uh, it's also useful for evaluation of uh, metastatic disease and also for assessment of treatment response. So, uh, for orbital ultrasound, so um, it's the a uh, classical appearance on uh, ultrasound would be a biconvex echogenic mass. So if the tumor uh, shows uh, invasion through the uh, Brox membrane or the uh, innermost layer of the choroid, it may show a color button appearance as seen in this uh, first image. As well as the mushroom shape of the um, tumor. So um in incidences where where there are there is um clearal invasion or extension this is uh this will be seen as uh like uh this in the second image wherein um we can see trans uh, scleral extension demonstrated by thinning of the sclera So other ocular lesions may also be seen with this appearance. So it is uh, important to include them in uh, differential diagnosis. So this would include uh, chor choroidal nevus, uh, choroidal metastasis, choroidal hemangioma, posterior scleritis, and age-related uh, macular degeneration. So as we can see in this uh, set of images, these are, for the first case, is a case of a choroidal hemangioma also showing the biconvex uh, shape. And then the second image is um, demonstrating choroidal metastasis. And the last image is a uh, case of choroidal uh, nevus. For CT, uh, UVL uh, melanoma generally appears as a nonspecific uh, lenticular or mushroom shape of tissue mass that is hyperdense relative to the vitreous humor and shows a uh, mild to moderate enhancement as seen in this uh, set of images. For MRI, uh, these uh, lesions uh, typically show the char characteristic uh, T1 hyperintensity and T2 hypointensity, which is mainly due to the parag paramagnetic effects of melanin, which causes uh, T1 and T2 shortening. So, but this is not always the case since uh, there are also some lesions which may be uh, mildly pigmented, which uh, represents a amelanotic uh, melanomas, which are which may be seen as a iso intense to vitreous humor uh, to the which have uh, iso intense signals to relative to the vitreous uh, humor on T one. So these lesions also show uh, enhancement on contrast and. Uh, Restricted diffusion. So these are uh, other examples of uh, ocular melanoma. So these are HL T1, T2, uh, DWI, and uh, contrast enhanced um, images showing ocular melanoma with extraocular extension. So on the image A, we can see on T1. We can see that the mass in the right orbit is heterogeneous with areas of T1 hyperintensity with evidence of extraocular extension. 
and then on the image B, which is a T2 sequence, so showing the heterogeneous uh, high point intense uh, signals. On the DWI, it shows uh, marked hyperintensity, and on contrast, shows uh, contra uh, heterogeneous uh, enhancement. So a frequent uh, complication associated with not just ocular melanoma, but also with other choroidal tumors is a uh, retinal detachment. So there are various, various subtypes, but the most commonly associated with uh, tumors are, is the exudative um, detachment. So it usually appears as a uh, dependent areas of moderate to high signal intensity on T1 and T2. And then um, hemorrh uh, hemorrhagic subretinal fluid may also be seen, which may alter the signal. So as for differentials, um, differential considerations would include uh, mel melanocyt melanocytic uh, nevi, such as earlier seen in the ultrasound, uh, benign melanocytoma, choroidal hemangioma, retinal hamartoma, and um, retinoblastoma. So this is an example of uh, melanocytoma, which is, which is um, basically uh, has the same signals with uh, melanoma, but um, they would appear more, their most common site would be near or in the optic nerve compared to that of uh, melanoma, which uh, occurs more uh, between the layers of the retina, uh, retina and choroid. And then um, for choroidal hemangioma, um, Choroidal hemangiomas would show a uh, low signal on T1 and intermediate uh, signal on T2. But on contrast, uh, shows uh, intense enhancement. And then uh, for uh, retinoblastoma and astrocytic hamar hamartoma, so they basically have uh, the same um, signals on MRI. But for retinoblastoma, it usually appears in younger patients, while uh, retinal hamartomas or retinal astrocytomas are seen uh, with um, associated with tuberous uh, sclerosis. So as for the treatment, uh, larger lesions or lesions with extraocular uh, extension usually is uh, treated by inoculation. And then uh, as for uh, smaller, medium-sized uh, lesions, they usually go through uh, brachytherapy. And then as for the prognosis, um, despite treatment, uh, the Collaborative Ocular Melanoma Study, or COMA, uh, which is one of the largest prospective studies uh, done on ocular melanoma, so they said that a 10-year cumulative uh, metastatic rate of about 34% is noted with the most common uh, metastatic site to be the liver followed by the lung, bone, and skin. And uh, genetic uh, testing would be uh, suggested for these types of patients since um, to know if the lesion is um, more likely to metastasize versus uh, non less likely metastasizing uh, lesion. So that ends my um, report and these are my sources and uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Joe Ed. Very good, very good presentation. Thank you for